All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Capsule Corp Endeavor MADV mod, which is being made by forum user Gabu. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a kerbalized version of the MADV, and is also kind of the reverse of what we did last episode. Now, of course, last episode we looked at the uh, Duna base camp being made by the Lonesome Robots Aerospace series of parts, and it was an expansion to the DADV that they had made previously. Whereas for Capsule Corp Endeavor, they already made a Mars base camp, which we looked at quite a long time ago, and now they're bringing us their version of the MADV, and I quite like this thing. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at all the parts this does add in. And now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison sake, and then uh, head, of course, to our mod filters to just leave on the capsule Corp stuff. And we'll start here, of course, with the sort of central crux of the mod, the MADV. And it is gorgeous. We'll actually have to pop it up here, I guess, for now. And yes, as you can see, a very nicely made version of the MADV with some interesting coloring to it. Very nice look overall. I do like both the modeling and texturing on it. It does look kerbalized, though not the usual all white color that we tend to see with parts, which is kind of cool. And of course, as for its stats here, it has a maximum crew capacity of five, requiring at least one crew member to operate. It has a built-in ablator, data transmitter, RCS thrusters at multiple points, a reaction wheel, the typical crew report, electric charge of 850, liquid fuel of 2,160, monopropellant of 250, and oxidizer of 2,000. 640 and overall has a whole lot of awesome features to this thing. For instance, if we right click, notice the giant list of things we can do. Now, of course, we have the typical things like turning on lights, toggle flags. And then we have the new stuff like deploying the lander legs down here, which is always fun to have. We also have this door up here, which we can open to show off a crew hatch, which is of course where you pull your kerbals out of. And then what's really fun is we can arm an elevator and then use that elevator right there to go down to ground level. And this is something that of course is in the design for the MADV, but uh, we didn't see in the version of the, of the DADV that we looked at for uh, Lonesome Robots Aerospace. So very cool to actually have the functioning elevator in this edition. Now beyond that, we have down here, a large cargo bay, which you can either access through a small elevator right there, or of course just opening the entire freaking thing. Though there are a couple of glitches, which is understandable, this is sort of an early, uh, recently released version of this, so it's kind of beta-ish, I guess. And you can kind of open up this cargo bay and then also open the little elevator there, which can cause your uh, ship to flip. <laughs> I had that happen to me with Kerbal Physics. Also with the elevator, if the elevator is at the bottom and you then disarm the elevator, as you can see, the elevator stays there. And that can also cause some very interesting issues with Kerbal Physics. So it is best to return the elevator to the top uh, before you actually do uh, disarm the elevator. And the final thing we do have is up here with the nose cone, we can open up that top. And with that, we have an attachment point there so that you can put a docking port, which of course we do have later on in the list. All in all, 
very cool. Now, the second thing we do have here in Command and Control, or, well, not Command and Control, but pods, rather, is the Extra Vehicular Mobility Land Unit, a cool little rover to go inside of that little cargo bay, of course, unless you would like to design your own thing. But it is a beautiful little rover if we actually do uh, zoom in. There we go. Got a lot of good parts to it. It does have a built-in light on the front. It doesn't actually illuminate like a spotlight, so you will still have to add those, but it is nice for being able to see this thing in the dark a bit easier. Now, as for its stats there, it of course has 250 electric charge, and well, that's it, and a built-in seat, of course, for your Kerbal. Now, moving on, we have nothing in fuel tanks. In engines, we do have two engines, which I think is kind of a beta thing right now, uh, because one fits the look and design of this rocket, the other not so much. But hey, it's still another rocket you could use. Now, the first one here is the CCRL-10 Mini, which fits quite nicely with the design of this whole, you know, this whole ship. And it does have 70 kilonewtons of max thrust with a a max ISP of 415, does use liquid fuel and oxidizer, and does have four degrees of gimbling, and is the intended engine to sort of go on this thing. Now, you will notice there aren't attachment points uh, for the engines like you would normally see, and so you're supposed to just kind of put them at specific points. Uh, for me, I actually downloaded the uh, craft file for this, so I had it in all the right areas, because, man, I was putting it in some weird places. But as you can see, it does fit radially onto anything you want, so hey, you can put an engine here if you want, and there you go. That's a thing that you can do. Now, the other engine we have is the CCRL, I guess, full size, and is much bigger, and really doesn't, you know fit the whole size of things, but still, hey, new engine, which will produce 220 kilonewtons of thrust max with 455 ISP, using, of course, liquid fuel and oxidizer, and again, the four degrees of gimbling, so, you know, just the big brother of that little engine, but all is good. Now, we have nothing in command and control, in structural, again, nothing in coupling, we do have that docking port I mentioned up here, so let's get rid of the rover and pop in... There we go, a lovely little docking port, which does have lights and also can be extended ever so slightly. And does, you know, look quite good. I always do like a nice extendable docking port. Now, then we have nothing in payload, nothing in aerodynamics, two wheels in ground. Again, this kind of seems to be the same deal as the engines. So let's actually grab the rover back there and head back to ground, of course, where we have the first engine, which is the MMSEV Wheels T2, which is way too big for this rover. But instead, we also have the tiny Wheels T2, which is just the right size for this rover. I have a feeling this was like the test version, and this was when they changed the size. That's my assumption, at least. But either way, hey, new wheel. So there you go. You can play around with the tiny thing. I do quite like that little, little wheel. And then nothing in thermal, nothing in electrical, nothing in communication, nothing in science, and nothing in utility. So that is it for the Capsule Corp Endeavor MADV, which is pretty cool. So if we do actually uh, don't save here and go to the proper official craft file as downloaded from the mod page, we do have, as you can see here, the full-on MADV, which, I mean, is still pretty much the same as what we saw here, because it is one gigantic body. But most importantly, we have the engines here in their proper place, and if we open up the big cargo bay, you'll notice that a uh, small docking port has been added to the interior to hold on to our little rover there. And yeah, so you just pop it off and then ride away. It is pretty cool. So let's go take a look at this thing actually out on Duna, and I don't know why I hit new. No, I need to hit leave to actually, you know, go places. So let's head to the tracking station and head to our MADV, which is, as you can see, 
on the red planet. Now, unfortunately, when I landed this thing, I kind of ended up on a slight angle, so getting the rover out might be a little bit interesting, but let's give this a go, folks. So, of course, we have landed safely with uh, very effective engines. As you can see there, that is as much of the fuel as I used to deorbit, because I brought myself into an orbit around Duna, as for some reason, the ship lander on HyperEdit doesn't seem to work anymore no matter what I do. It always seems to put me inside the planet. So I just put it into orbit and then landed it safely. So there we are. Now uh, let's actually get ourselves out a Kerbal, which does mean, of course, heading over to here and let's open up the door. We'll go ahead and arm the elevator. And then soon, watch hilarity begin. As with Kerbal Physics, this elevator, though functional, <laughs> is, is a little bit awkward for our per, poor Kerbal. So let's go down, and as you can see, he's falling, he's falling down, he's just kind of freaking out, and now he's off the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jebediah. The uh, elevator really, really doesn't seem to like him. It works better going up, but still, coming down, uh, it's all because of this angle right here. It just completely messes with it. If he makes it to the straight part here, he tends to be fine, but yeah, that... That angled bit, that tends to knock poor Jebediah off there. But oh well, let us uh, actually head back to the ship because we do have to return to it to send the elevator back up. And then while it's going there, I'm just going to go ahead and disarm the elevator so that we can get into the cargo bay more easily. And that just kind of got absorbed. There we are. Lovely. So, Kerbal... No, no, wait. Hold on. Got to go back here. And let's take him into the cargo bay. So let's open up the little cargo bay elevator. There we are. Excellent. Get Jebediah on there. Seems to be slightly elevated, but there we are. Shouldn't have any issues. So then uh, back to the ship to close it entirely and bring him inside where he can board the rover, which means we are, of course, <laughs> going to have to clip in here. There we go. He is in, folks. We are there. Let's have him board. And then the fun part, you got to kind of, you know, wiggle yourself around. There's probably a much better way for me to go about doing this. But that little docking port over. Wait, moment. There we are. <laughs> Decouple. And then we can open up the large cargo bay. Open big cargo bay. There we go. And switch over to him. Oop, the car is rolling. I forgot to turn on the brakes. That probably would have been a good idea. But <laughs> there we go. Jebediah has taken the elevator down, then gone into the cargo bay onto a rover and is now free to drive around wherever he pleases. And that, that is wonderful. And also this rover, oh God, has a really, really fast acceleration. <laughs> As you clearly saw there, you may want to do a little bit of limiting on those engines because, wow, they are very, very fast. Oh no, board, board quick! Oh god, we've lost it, folks! We've lost it! It's going to roll away! Oh, there, yo, oh, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. <sighs> yep, shouldn't have flipped it. I blame you for this, Jebediah. I blame you. <laughs> But yeah, so that is the Capsule Corp Endeavor MATV. It is a wonderful little parts mod that adds yet another take on this beautiful craft and adds a little bit more than previous versions we've looked at. I love the functioning elevator. I love the little rover. You will want to tone the wheels down a bit because wow, does it accelerate quickly. And all in all, you just got to watch the physics with that elevator. But other than that, it is just just a wonderful parts pack adding in a cool bit to the game and of course if you download the original capsule corp endeavor mod you also do have the mars base camp for orbit and you can use them all together to have a wonderful Duna adventure. But yes, that is going to be it for today, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed and of course you do come back for the next episode. Until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. I'm going to leave Jebediah down there. He he lost the rover. He deserves this. Oh, God, I did also forget to close all the doors, though. Ha! Later, folks!